Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dyasa Yatam Vayari Taratas Chate Sarvigyaswarat Janma Dyasa Yatam Vayari Taratas Chate Sarvigyaswarat Janma Dyasa Yatam Vayari Taratas Chate Sarvigyaswarat Janma Dyasa Yatam Vayari Taratas Chate Dene Brahma Rudaya Adika Vaye Mojan Tija Suraya Tejo Varim Adam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Tri Sargo Misha Tejo Varim Rita Jata Vini Mayo Jatra Tri Sargo Misha Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mayi Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mayi Oh my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O oh, my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. From our respectful obeisances unto you. How from our respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water of water seen on fire or land seen on water only because of him do the material universes only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal appear factual although they are unreal I therefore meditate upon him Lord Sri Krishna I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Gocha. Dharma Prujita Kaita Bhutra Parama Nirmat Saranam Satam Parama Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Astra Vastu Shivedam Tapa Atrayum Shivedam Tapa Atrayum Maranam Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kim Va Parir Ishwaraha Kim Va Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Kriti Vihi Susu Subish Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in their heart. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. <coughs> it's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigamaka patarur galitam falam. Nigamaka patarur galitam falam. Sukamakad amrita dravya sangitam. Sukamakad amrita dravya sangitam. Vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavuka. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavuka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. 
including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrimpatam Swakata Krishna. Shrimpatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Radiantak Stohi Badrani. Radiantak Stohi Badrani. Vidu Noti Suhit Satam. Vidu Noti Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. <coughs> or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? <coughs> Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta Prayesu Abhadresu Nasta Prayesu Abhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Cheta etar anavidam. Cheta Sitam Sadve Prasidati. Sitam Sadve Prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are greed are, are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate be, remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Shiyante chashikarmani. Shiyante sachakarmani. Drusta evatmanishwari. Druta evatmanishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of the material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of assumption of Magram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Text 35. Kavasahita Viraham Purushottamasya. Kava Saita Vidaham Purushotamasya Prima Valoka Ruchira Smita Valgujalpai Prima Valoka Ruchira Smita Valgujalpai Stadium Samanam Haram Madumani Nanam Stadium Samanam Haram Madumani Nanam Promot Savo Mamayat Angri vitang kitaya. Romat savo mamayada. Angri vitang kitaya. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. One who therefore can tolerate the pangs of separation. That supreme. Uh, one therefore can tolerate the pangs of separation from that supreme personality of Godhead. I'm oh, sorry. Who therefore can tolerate the pangs of separation from that Supreme Personality of Godhead. He could conquer the gravity and passionate wrath of his sweethearts like Satyabhama by his sweet smile of love, pleasing glance and hearty appeals. When he traversed my earth's surface, I would be immersed in the dust of his lotus feet and thus would be sumptuously covered with grass, 
which appeared like hairs, standing on me out of pleasure. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. There were chances of separation between the Lord and his thousands of queens because of the Lord's being absent from home. But as far as his connection with earth was concerned, the Lord would traverse the earth with his lotus feet, and therefore there was no chance of separation. When the Lord left the surface of the earth to return to his spiritual abode, the earth's feelings of separation were therefore more acute. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The uh, beautiful verse today is uh, full of transcendental uh, ecstasy. Uh, so it says, who therefore can tolerate the pangs of separation from that supreme personality of Godhead? In other words, if you've ever seen Krishna and experienced the beauty of the Lord, his transcendental features, and heard about his transcendental activities, and tasted his prasadam and so forth, it's very, very difficult to tolerate separation from Krishna. That's why anyone who has engaged in devotional service, even if they fall down, they will eventually come back. Uh, so therefore, we should never uh, discount anybody, even if they have left Krishna consciousness, because it's almost impossible to forget a Krishna once you've tasted the nectar of Krishna consciousness. But what about a devotee who is, is uh, overwhelmed with the nectar of Krishna's uh, uh, pastimes and the holy name, etc. Uh, if there's an absence of the Lord, they feel it very, very acutely, as it's, as it's said here. And a Mother Earth, who was always in touch with the Lord because he was always uh, stepping on her and his lotus feet were always stepping on her. Uh, when he left the material world, at least it seemingly left, it caused her great, uh, uh, let's say, uh, feelings of separation. So, if we talk about feelings of separation, we can see that very few people actually feel separation from God or Krishna. But devotees feel it very acutely. So, therefore we see that the that Maya has caught all those people who don't feel the separation of God. Like for example, everything is present in this world. The only thing that seems to be missing is love for, for Krishna. And when you go out in the public, you'll see people are doing so many things. They're talking about baseball, football, and basketball. And, uh, you know, they're wearing T-shirts of uh, football players and basketball players and baseball players. And they have, uh, you know, Mariners this and, and all kinds of, you know, clothing and, and hats. And then you have the politicians, and people have hats to make America great again, shirts that say Black Lives Matter. And people are immersed in all kinds of thoughts, but very few people are actually feeling separation from Krishna or God. So that's the sim symptom that Maya have, has caught the majority of the people in the world. They're overwhelmed with all these other issues, and uh, they don't have Krishna on their radar uh, or God. Some people do, but very few as compared to the number of people in the world. In fact, in Kali Yuga, the number is 75% of the population is not uh, God conscious or Krishna conscious. 
and the 25% that are, that is diminishing also. And just like every year, you'll see uh, once in a while uh, in the newspaper, it'll say, the number of Christians has diminished in America, and the number of the atheists has increased. So uh, that's a fact. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of Kali Yuga. However, um, Krishna has given many, many opportunities for people to remember him. He spoke to Bhagavad Gita, and then his devotees uh, spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Lord Chaitanya started the Sankirtan movement. All this is to bring Krishna back into focus, into people's lives. And we're, we're representatives of, of Lord Chaitanya. So that's what our life should be dedicated to, to bring Krishna back into focus in people's lives. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's through association. Association means that you take the time to help somebody uh, remember Krishna in one way or another. So, like recently, we had a little program at the farm, and uh, Dhananjaya invited his mother and father. Right? Now, uh, the thing is, how to get someone to find a point of attachment to Krishna consciousness? So, Dhananjaya's mother was brought up on a farm. So, when she came to see the farm and the cows and and also, I, I showed her some of the soil, and she wanted to hold it in her hand. She held it in her hand, and she pressed it like that, and looked at it, and, and said, oh, this is really good soil. Right. So that impressed her. Is that right, Dana Joy? Yeah. yeah. She got impressed by the soil. So what does soil have to do with Krishna consciousness? Well, well, because it's this connection. She, she's brought up on a farm. She knows what good soil is, and she sees good soil on a Krishna farm, right? So now she has a point of connection. And uh, also, she and her husband, who is, uh, let's say, a little less interested in Krishna consciousness, I also saw him praying uh, when they were repeating the uh, Sarira Vidya job. He also was uh, uh, sort of mumbling it. <laughs> so <coughs> somehow or other, through association, we build up people's awareness of, of Krishna or, and helps them to uh, become uh, a little Krishna conscious. Right? So that's the beginning. Everything starts from the subtle and goes to the gross. So uh, this is what we have to do. We have to invite people to come take prasadam and have some nice talk, and might, maybe not directly about Krishna right away, but they see, if you, can, if you come to a devotee's house, you have pictures of Krishna everywhere, you have an altar, and so people understand this is different. And they, they can also, and then if you treat them nicely, they say, well, it's different, but these people are really nice. I, I feel comfortable associating with them. I, had, I, had, I was a little happy. And... Uh, made me forget about the election, about the, this thing and that thing, and, and, uh, and it was a good thing. I think I'd like to go back. So this is the point, is uh, we might not be able to get, you know, hundreds and thousands of people to chant Hare Krishna, but if we can get one person, one person to appreciate uh, the association of devotees, to taste prasadam, and to... Uh, uh, maybe say the name of Krishna once, th that's a great achievement right there because the one thing that's missing in this world is Krishna consciousness. Everything else is there. You go to Costco, you'll find everything. <laughs> you, know, you go on the Amazon, you'll find everything. But that one thing uh, is generally missing. So we have to make that thing that's missing seem pertinent to people's lives. Okay, so uh, when we talk about people's lives, uh, we're talking about some serious issues. And this is explained in the, in the Bhagavatam. Yaya samuito 
jiva atmanam chigunatmakam paro pi manute tiartam nartam tatkritam chavipadyate. So this verse is extremely important. Prabhupada says the Bhagavatam verses are uh, so gigantic that in one verse you have a whole philosophy explained. So this one verse is like that. It says, due to the external energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. So, as soon as we think of ourself as a material product, just like if I sit down and listen to a lecture, and in the lecture they say, well, according to Darwin, we all come from monkeys. Oh, really? Uh, okay, I come from a monkey. And the proof is, uh, there, there's a vestige of a tail uh, bone in the back of a human being. Then they show you a picture of it. Does it look like the vestige of a tailbone? You don't know. You don't know what it means. But uh, some authority is saying there's a vestige of a tail. It proves that we all come from monkeys. Of course, you've never seen that. You don't even feel it in your body. But, uh, oh, the authority said so. So that's the proof that we come from monkeys. So as long as we think of ourselves as a material product, then uh, we undergo the reactions of material miseries. So this is, this is a monumental point. This, this proves that actually suffering is unnecessary. It's due to faulty thinking. And Prabhupada writes, the root cause of suffering by the materialistic living beings is pointed out with remedial measures which are to be undertaken and also the ultimate perfection to be gained. All that in this one verse. Right? All this is mentioned in this particular verse. The living being is by constitution transcendental to material engagement, but he is now imprisoned by the external energy and therefore he thinks himself one of the material products. Now how did that happen? It's because of faulty education. It's because of the Big Bang. We come from monkeys, and uh, there's we're all victims of uh, uh, capitalism or this thing or that thing, and uh, you know we're de destroying the environment, and we have to uh, you know get no, don't drink milk because it's bad. And, so uh, right down the line, there's so many things that are being taught today. Just like this one lady came to the farm with her daughter to see the cows. And while they were seeing the cows, the mother told me, you know, my daughter doesn't drink milk. I said, really? Why not? I said, She's a vegan. And I looked at the daughter, and the daughter smiled. <laughs> I said, well, you can drink milk from these cows. And the daughter said, oh, no, 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 no. Right. So you see, they're being, they're being programmed every day. They're being programmed in these schools to what? To think of oneself as a material product and therefore undergo the reactions of material miseries. This is serious. And uh, Prabhupada continues, he says, the living being is by constitution transcendental to material engagement but he is now imprisoned by the external energy and therefore he thinks himself one of the material products. And due to his unholy contact, the pure spirit, spiritual entity suffers material miseries under the modes of material nature. The living entity misunderstands himself to be a material product. This means that the present perverted way of thinking feeling and willing under material conditions is not natural for him, but he has his normal way of thinking, willing under material condi uh, I'm sorry, but he has his normal way of thinking, feeling and willing. 
The living being in his original state is not without thinking, willing, and feeling power. It is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that the actual knowledge of the conditioned soul is now covered by ignorance. Thus the theory that a living being is absolute impersonal Brahman is re refuted herein. This cannot be because the living entity has his own way of thinking in his original unconditional state also. The present conditional state is due to the influence uh, of, uh, in, I'm sorry, influence of the external energy, which means that the illusory energy takes the initiative while the Supreme Lord is aloof. The Lord does not desire that a living being be illusioned by external energy. The external energy is aware of this fact, but still she accepts a thankless task of keeping the forgotten soul under illusion by her bewildering influence. The Lord does not interfere with the task of the illusory energy because such performance of the illusory energy are also performances of the illusory energy are also necessary for reformation of the conditioned soul. So in other words, suffering is necessary in some cases or in most cases for people to wake up and think, I don't want this. Why is it happening? Let me try and find out why I'm suffering so much. So unless this question arises in the mind of a person, they will not feel any necessity of uh, finding out why they're suffering. If they just think, oh, suffering is normal, I'll just accept it, or I'll take an anison, or I'll take a, uh, some pill, and it'll, it'll temporarily stop the suffering, and I'll just learn to live with it. No. It's not normal. Just like one time, this one uh, uh, mother of a devotee came and, and she had tears in her eyes. And she said, Prabhu, I am suffering. I said, what's the matter? She could hardly speak English. And she, she said, uh, this arthritis is hurting me too much. I can't, I, I can't think. I, I'm in pain all the time. I said, well, why did you, why'd you come to me? She said, oh, well, you, you know what to do. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not sure if I know what to do, but I, I can make a couple suggestions. And I did give her some suggestions. And then sometime later she came and she paid her basis and said, thank you very much. I don't feel any pain anymore. I said, okay, well, chant Hare Krishna then. You know? So you see, people are suffering terribly. And, and it's not a normal thing. And, and just taking some pill to temporarily stop the suffering is not the solution. It's not the solution. So the solution is, somehow or other, we have been taught ignorance in the name of religion, and because of that, we're suffering. So now, if we hear the proper knowledge of who we are and what is our eternal position in relationship to Krishna, we can get out of this suffering. So Krishna does not interfere with the task of maya because such performances of the illusory energy are also necessary for the reformation of the conditioned souls. An affectionate father does not like his children to be chastised by another agent, yet he puts his disobedient children under the custody of a severe man just to bring them to order. But the all-affectionate Almighty Father at the same time desires relief for the conditioned soul, relief from the clutches of the illusory energy. The king puts the disobedient citizens within the walls of the jail, but sometimes the king, desiring the prisoner's relief, personally goes there and pleads for reformation. And on his doing so, the prisoners are set free. Similarly, the Supreme Lord descends from his kingdom upon the kingdom of the illusory energy and personally gives relief in the form of the Bhagavad Gita, wherein he personally suggests that although the waves of the illusory energy are very stiff to overcome, one who surrenders unto the lotus feet of the Lord is set free by the order of the Supreme. This surrendering process is the remedial measure for getting relief from the bewildering waves of the illusory energy. The surrendering process is completed by the influence of association. 
The Lord has suggested, therefore, that by the influence of the speeches of saintly persons who have actually realized the supreme, conditioned souls are engaged in his transcendental loving service. They get a taste for hearing about the Lord, and by such hearing only are they gradually elevated to the platform of respect, devotion, and attachment for the Lord. So instead of respect and devotion and attachment to being a vegan, they should develop <laughs> this respect, devotion, and attachment for the Lord. And that can only happen in association of devotees. The whole thing is completed by the surrendering process. Herein also the same suggestion is made by the Lord in his incarnation of Vyasadeva. This means that the conditioned souls are being reclaimed by the Lord both ways, namely by the process of punishment, by the external energy of the Lord, and by himself as a spiritual master within and without. Within the heart of every living being, the Lord himself as a super soul, Paramatma, becomes the spiritual master. And from without, he becomes a spiritual master in the shape of scriptures, saints, and the initiator spiritual master. This is still more explicitly explained in the next sloka. So here we see one verse in Srimad Bhagavatam has all this in it. And we haven't even touched on all that's in it. It's just, uh, Prabhupada is just giving a quick explanation here. So this hearing and chanting in the association of devotees the association of devotees is something that can change a person's life. And all of us should be, be conscious of that. And we should seek association and we should give association. That is our duty as devotees. And every time we meet someone, we should try and find some way to give them a point of attachment to Krishna consciousness. It could be prasadam, it could be philosophy, it could be cow dung. Anything that's connected to Krishna. So I had, people come to the farm and say, oh, uh, we heard that you have uh, some cow dung here. And I said, yeah, we do. We do have cow dung. We have cow urine also. And they said, well, I, I want some cow dung. I said, okay, great. And then we start talking, right? And then they find out that, that this is connected to Krishna consciousness and they can come and get milk from the cows and this thing and that thing. And all of a sudden you have people who never come to the temple. And now they're getting interested in something related to the temple, and eventually they'll come to the temple. So we have to, everybody has some way of finding a, a means of uh, helping people to get attached to Krishna. So you don't have to be you know, some, some globetrotter that's making devotees all over the world. Wherever you are, there are many people who are suffering many, many people. So if you can help them by your association and connect them somewhere or other to Krishna, you have attained the position of being a guru. There are different levels of guru, but guru is someone who connects people to Krishna. So everybody should be a guru. Right? Everyone should at least be Vartma Padakshika Guru, introducing people to Krishna consciousness. There are three levels of Guru. It's Vartma Padakshika Guru, there's Shiksha Guru, and there is Diksha Guru. All three are Gurus. The one that introduces someone first to Krishna consciousness, the one that instructs someone in Krishna consciousness, the one that initiates someone in Krishna consciousness. So you should be a Guru. This should be your uh, let's say, real vocation in life. And when we become closer to Krishna, uh, then we feel more acutely that when we go out and see millions and millions of people that have hardly any connection to Krishna, we should feel compassion for them and do something to help at least one out of those millions to become closer to Krishna. Haribo. Are there any questions? Yes. Come. Hello, Krishna Mara. So, I'm just trying to understand the separation part. As uh, practicing devotees, I probably don't remember anything. 
what happen in when I come from the when 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 did I come actually from spiritual world to here and what was my actual relationship now how do we understand as we practice that at what level um, the feeling of separation has to come uh, evoke in our uh, consciousness well the, the somehow or other you gave up devotional service and somehow or other you're being inspired to take up devotional service so devotional service is your relationship with Krishna now, what specific devotional service, that's, that's another question. But in general, devotional service puts you, puts you in contact with Krishna. And part of that devotional service is chanting, Maha Mantra Hare Krishna, and so forth. Now next, uh, the feeling of separation from the Lord, well, the more you learn about Krishna, the more you'll feel a separation. Now, if you know nothing about Krishna, you don't feel any separation at all, right? Like, for example, do you know anything about your great grandfather? No. Do you feel any separation from your great grandfather? No, you don't. But if you found out, well, he did this and he did that, and, and uh, uh, he was very prominent here, and all of a sudden you say, well, that was my great grandfather, you know? And I'm, I'm sorry I never saw him. <laughs> You know, but now, now I'm finding out uh, this one man called me up uh, about a year and a half ago and I have a little blog uh, about the uh, Armenian uh, stories and things like that, right? And, uh, and I put a lot of Krishna consciousness into it also. So he calls me up and he says he found out that my family was born in this little town in Turkey, right? And that, uh, and then he could see from the, this blog that I knew a lot of things about that little town and what happened there, you know, 150 years ago and so forth. So he called me up and he said, I want to get to know you, he said, you know, and I'm, I'm looking for information about my ancestors in that town. And uh, can you please help me? <laughs> so, uh, you understand, everybody mm -hmm. has a great grandfather, but you, you don't feel any separation from him, but now, when you start finding out, you start saying, wow, that was my great-grandfather, you know, he was a big landholder, and he did this, and he did that, right? So in the same way, we don't know anything about Krishna, but once you start finding out, you start to associate with the Lord through hearing and chanting, and then you realize, you, you can feel separation, you know, you get the point? Yes. Somebody's asking a question. Someone on YouTube asks, uh, uh, Arun Krishna Das from Bangalore, how do you keep mo how to keep motivation on when no matter how many times uh, or people I talk to, they don't get convinced? Well, uh, let's let's hear what Prabhupada says about that. Prabhupada's point is, if you strictly follow the regulative principles and are chanting good 16 rounds a day, then you get the potency. Krishna gives you the potency to be able to convince people. So it's not an easy thing to convince a person, but if you have that purity, the strength of purity that comes from being very strict in your following the regulative principles, and chanting really well, and uh, always feeling that uh, you're insufficient to do anything spiritual, and therefore you depend on the mercy of uh, Guru and Krishna and sadhus. Just like here, what did he say? We just read it today. Uh, Prabhupada said, The whole thing is completed by the surrendering process. Herein also the same suggestions made by the Lord in his incarnation as Vyasadeva. This means that the conditioned souls are being reclaimed by the Lord both ways. 
namely by the process of punishment by the external energy of the Lord and by himself as a spiritual master within and without, within the heart of every living being, the Lord himself as the super soul Paramatma becomes the spiritual master and from without, without he becomes a spiritual master in the shape of scriptures, saints, and the initiator spiritual master. This is still more explicitly explained in the next sloka. So, scriptures, saints, and initiator spiritual masters. So, you want to be a spiritual master in the sense that you can convince someone to be interested in Krishna consciousness. Well, uh, that requires uh, a lot of experience. And an experienced devotee is, all, is a person who first makes friends with somebody and gains their respect by uh, what you would call uninterrupted devotional service. Or uh, uh, let's say it's called predictability. If a person understands the principles that you are preaching, in other words, no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication, always chanting Hare Krishna, always hearing uh, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, always associating with devotees, always offering your food, never eating anything that's not offered, and, and so that's only prasadam and engaging in uh, deity worship and, and so forth and, and Harinam Sankirtan. If they see that over a long period of time, they begin to trust you because there's predictability, right? If they see you're doing these things and then one day they see you're smoking marijuana in some, uh, uh, with a bunch of low class people, and that's a shock. They say, my God, you know, that's, he, he's violating the rules that he's teaching. So you have to, to gain people's uh, confidence and faith, it takes a long, long time. And you have to be patient. You can't, just because you can't convince someone the first time you meet them, that doesn't mean you're a failure. It means that you didn't understand the process. The process is they have to see you for a long time following Krishna consciousness sincerely and sacrificing and doing everything possible to be kind and gentle and encouraging people in every way possible. And then eventually they say, okay, whatever this person's gonna tell me, that's what I'm gonna do. It's not one, one shot, uh, fast food, you know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, you, the person surrenders. No way, they, they haven't surrendered for millions of lifetimes. So how are they gonna surrender in one minute? Right? And, and how do you have the strength to be that powerful enough to, to, to make someone surrender in, in a minute. We, we don't have that empowerment. But you get it after a long period of Krishna consciousness, uninterrupted devotional service. So don't be in a hurry, be, be patient and, and pay attention to the fact, to the, to the principles of Krishna consciousness. Yeah, yeah I, I think I heard like one lecture from Shri Prabhupada that if you not convince yourself, you cannot convince other people. You have to be fully convinced in order to convince other people. That's also where to, where to be introspective to think, am I really convinced about the process before convincing other people? No, steadiness and devotional service is, is one sign that you're convinced. Mm. So that means regular, uh, temple program, deity worship, and and uh, classes, and, and uh, sankirtan, doing these things day after day, week after week, year after year, it convinces people that you're sincere and they can trust you. That's the sign of conviction. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. When people see you steady. And it's, uh, Just like the food truck, you know. They're there every Wednesday, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, right on time, right? right. Rain or shine. That, that convinces people, these people are serious. They, they actually mean what, they, what they're doing, mm. you know? So, Maharaj, I have a question. Is, um, hmm, how to put it? Separation, nobody really likes separation. 
and everybody wants, you know, because it's, separation is lamentable. So nobody really uh, welcomes separation. But now, in, uh, in, in, it's, in the same time, it is said separation is the best, uh, how to say, um, absence, love in separation. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Right. Or separation, love in separation is the highest. Hmm. That's in our philosophy is. But at the same time, we don't welcome separation. So we, nobody, everybody's scared of that. Everybody wants to be always in union. So how do you explain that? What is connection? Separation is not no, very welcome. It's, it's, it's like if you love someone, then separation is unbearable. Correct. But somehow you have to tolerate it. So if you look at this, the gopis in Radharani, for them it was unbearable. So the only way they could tolerate it is remembering Krishna and enacting his pastimes. So Krishna leaves Vrindavan, at least it looks like he leaves Vrindavan, and then the, Kopi, the only way they can cope with that separation is they're always talking about Krishna, they're always they're having plays about Krishna's pastimes, they're enacting those plays, someone takes the role of Krishna sometimes, one of the gopis becomes Balaram, one of the gopis becomes this or that. And they're, the only way they can mitigate the pain is by remembering, not by forgetting. See, when you forget, then it causes pain. When you remember, it mitigates the pain. But yet it is said that separation definitely... So, like for example, if you have pain and you take a drug, to forget the pain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make the pain any less. As soon as the drug wears off, the pain is still there again, and it's, and it's even stronger, because you had some relief, temporary artificial relief. So the only way you can mitigate the pain is not by an artificial way, it's by remembering the Lord. So therefore, the, the more you forget the Lord, the more the pain is severe. The more you remember the Lord, the more you can reduce the feeling of the pain mm -hmm. of separation. Yeah. But why then, yeah, yeah, I agree. But one, why separation, love and separation is the best? That's the question, because, well, because the highest is the highest. Because uh, it proves that there's love. It proves that there's love. Like for example, let's say you're married but you have to go away for, for work or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you come back, you see that the person you love is with someone else. Uh, and there's been inf uh, uh, it's infidelity. So are you happy about that or are you uh, devastated, right? But if you come back and see that person is exactly the same person that you left. They have, in fact, more so because they're, they're so happy to see you and they've done so many things to make you happy on your return. So that means that there's love. They, 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 that person did not change. In fact, they got even better while you were absent because of their extreme love for you. But if you come back and have persons with someone else, and it means they completely forgot you. They didn't really have any love for you anyway. So let's say, uh, you know, Prabhupada has left or your Guru Dev has left, right, mm -hmm. physically. But after 50 years, your feeling of separation is even stronger and your appreciation is even greater than before because all that 50-year time you kept remembering, you kept practicing, you didn't fall down under any circumstance and you... Uh, we're always, you know, maintaining your vows and things like that. So your love increased mm -hmm. by feeling the separation mm -hmm. and the need to associate through hearing and chanting. Uh, mm -hmm. So a person who remains faithful and does not waver one iota 
in their dedication to the person they love, that means there's real love. There's real, everything is real. And the person immediately, they forget and they go off and, you know, engage in all kinds of nonsense. That means there was very little love in the beginning. And so how do you connect your, the, your answer? It's a good answer. How you connect that with the statement of Srila Rupa Goswami, which is that without suppression, love would have met untimely death. I repeat that. I don't, I don't okay. Rupa, Rupa, uh, your, your answer, your answer um, Rupa Goswami says, without separation, love would have met untimely death. That's what Rupa Goswami says. Okay, so that's the flip side of uh, proximity breeds contempt. Mm hmm. Right, if you're too close to a person, and uh, you might take that person for granted, you might find little faults that you think are, you know, really important, and then finally you might commit some offenses. Just like Lord Chaitanya told Jagannanda to go away for some time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because <clears throat> he was always finding little, little faults in the Lord. Although he had great love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a little while, he was finding little faults. Not that he was being mean, right? But it, it was annoying to Lord Chaitanya. So he, he sent him away for some time. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's what Prabhupada say? Prabhupada so it's, a, it's a flip side of what uh, uh -huh. Rupa uh -huh. Goswami is saying. Yeah, that makes sense. From left, uh, brings about contempt, yeah? Proximity mm. breeds contempt. Proximity, okay. That's what Prabhupada says somewhere that um, sometimes in marriage life, sometimes the wife to go, has to go away for some time to stay with the parents from the husband, something like that. I think Prabhupada says something like that. Well, you find it. And we'll discuss no. it. <laughs> no, I know. And that's what I'm saying. It's sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the wife has to go to spend some time. I think maybe people from Indian culture, they know, right? Come and speak on the mic. <laughs> That's it. We have an expert here. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> lift, it, lift it up so she can hear. Oh, okay. Uh, when we are with our parents, staying with our parents, we take it, things for granted. And uh, when parents, we argue with them, we fight with them. No, I don't want to do this and that. And, uh, and then when we come, especially for us, when we come out of our parents, I've been here in the U.S. from 2002, so it's 18 years. Wow. So uh, now when I do things by my own, like, you know, I really wonder how, how my mom did this. And, like, you know, I really feel the separation. And... Uh, for the values she has given me. And, uh, so I you really appreciate thank, your mom and yes, dad definitely, much more. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Because she does Tulsi Puja every Fridays and Tuesdays. And that's when I, I had that inner, uh, the dormant, it was there in me. And then when I came to here to the temple, and then it, the bhakti came to me, like, you know, like, you know, that's one thing, like, you know, I really appreciate Now you can appreciate values. your mom appreciate a lot more. Appreciate my mom very well and the way she raised us. But uh, when I was there with her, I used to fight with her and all. But now I feel she is really great, yeah. That's These are the realizations that come over time. You know, so, um, but that's a good, good uh, child because when a child grows up and then they think more carefully about uh, all the sacrifices mom and dad made, mm -hmm. then they have a new appreciation that they didn't have, mm. uh, and they didn't have because of bad association right. outside, you know. Now this is different, I heard from Papa said that sometimes good in couples, when the wife and husband, sometimes the wife to go to spend some time with the family away from the husband. Okay. It's a part of, I think, Vedic system. Yeah? 
Yeah. It's, it's very important for a relationship between. So in Vedic system, particularly at least in the first few years of marriage, you know, the wife goes back to the, the family and one particular month, uh, it's the month of Ashada, uh, where there is a separation. So it's, it's created uh, based on this, I think it's based on this Vedic principle that, you know, that it will breed more love between the couple. Okay, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's a statement by Shakespeare. So sometimes you appreciate things more when you don't have it. You know, and then, then it comes back and you, you appreciate it much more. Okay, so Haripo, where is the Prabhupada Kije? Don't come. I'm just a professional. You want to do it? 